In this episode of Know Your Shortcuts, we're going to be adding a shortcut button that fades our camera straight into our production like this. We'll then add one to put a picture in picture in this corner. And finally, we'll add a shortcut button to zoom into our picture in picture and back out on demand. Hi, I'm Heath from vMix. If you're fairly new to vMix, you're in the right place because this video is designed to take some of the simple features in vMix and make them work even better. If you haven't already, head to vMix.com and download our free 60-day trial to follow along. The trial is an unwatermarked version of our top tier vMix Pro Edition and offers all the features. Now, these tips are available in every edition of vMix, so no matter what edition you're running, this is going to be relevant to you. Future videos may cover more complex shortcuts, only available in certain editions, but I'll be sure to explain that beforehand. The shortcuts we'll be setting up are called Fade, Overlay Input 1, and Overlay Input 1 Zoom. If you're interested in a particular one, just jump to it in the timeline. But if you haven't used a shortcut before, I'd recommend sticking around for this first one to get a feel for them. vMix allows you to add custom shortcuts for almost all of its features. We have a giant list of all the shortcuts on offer on our website, and you'll find a link to that in the description. There are a few advanced things to know about using shortcuts, like when to use an input rather than a value. But for this video, we'll start with some of the easier shortcuts and save the tricky stuff for later. Here we are in the vMix interface. I've already added my camera with embedded audio, a video of some bees, and an infographic image. Our first shortcut is the fade function. This does just what it says on the packet. It will send an input into the program output using a fade transition effect. If I was to do this with a mouse in the interface, I would find my camera input and click on it to send it to preview, and then click on fade. Or alternatively, I could click the quick play button, which is also set to default as a fade. Now that sounds pretty easy, but if I had a heap of inputs and I needed to go looking for my particular camera to send it to the program output, it might be a little bit hard. And if I'm constantly sending my camera to the output, it's handy to have a button dedicated to this. So to do this, I go up to the settings button and then click on the shortcuts section and click on the add button. From here, I click on the find key and I go looking for a key by pressing that key. Now, I could use a stream deck, I could use a MIDI keyboard or MIDI controller or just a standard keyboard. Now we're keeping it simple today, so we're using a standard keyboard. And I'm gonna use the letter H because my name's Heath and that'll be easy to remember. So I'll press the H key. There we go, it appears and click OK. Now the next thing to do is go to the function. So what we want the shortcut to do. Now from here, what we're looking for is the fade function. It just so happens to be at the top here. So we'll click it. Here we've got a duration. This is how long the fade transition effect will take place. We'll leave that on a thousand, which is in milliseconds, so it's a second. The next thing is the input. Here we need to decide what input we want to fade into our program output. And in this case, it's my camera, which is input one and labeled Heath. Next, we can decide whether we want to assign the shortcut to an input number. Now, if we did that, it would always reference input one and not necessarily my camera if I was to move the inputs around. So I don't want that. I would prefer that it always follows my camera in case in future I wanna move my inputs around. So I won't tick that. Next is the mix. Now mix effects are an advanced feature only available in certain levels of vMix. And we won't be covering that today because this is a beginner's class. So if you're interested in the mix effect and how this might be used, you can check out one of our training videos all about mix inputs, and I'll link that in the description. Next, we have a title. Here we can add a custom title so that it's easy to find the shortcut in the list when we start to build up a big list of shortcuts. So I might call this Heath Cam. And then we can add a description if we wish, but I'm not gonna worry about it this time. And then we have display. 
Now this is set aside for custom controllers, such as the Stream Deck. Now we're using a keyboard today, so it's not relevant to us, so we're gonna leave it. Now we need to choose whether to make this a local shortcut or keep it as a default global shortcut. If we make it local, it will only work in this particular saved preset. So that's a good idea for us because I'm not always going to wanna to fade my camera in using the H key in every single vMix production. I only want it to work in this particular preset. So I've ticked that. And next we can choose whether to show it in the web controller. We may cover the web controller in a future video or you can check it out in one of our training videos. Uh, for now, it doesn't really matter whether we have this ticked or not because we won't be using the web controller. So now we'll click OK, and then we'll click OK again. And now we can test whether this button works. So if I briefly fade back and now use the H key to fade my camera in. Here we go. There we go, simple. We have a working shortcut for fading my camera into the program output. We did it. Next, we wanna put my infographic input into the top corner using overlay one. To do this, we firstly need to set an overlay to be positioned there. So we go to the overlay settings down here. Then we make sure that we're dealing with number one, overlay one. Note there are four overlays available in most versions of vMix. Next, we select the type. So we can choose between full screen, where the overlay takes up the entire screen, or picture in picture, where the overlay takes up a small space on the screen. So we'll select picture in picture. Then we can select the effect used when we bring the overlay on and off. For us, we can leave this as fade. We can then select how long it takes for the fade to occur. In this case, it's half a second or 500 milliseconds. So we'll leave that as is. And the rest of the information is not relevant for now. Next, we need to resize this overlay. So we go to zoom and we zoom it down a bit. There we go. And then we can position it in the top corner. So you can do that by dragging it or you can do some finer adjustments using these. But I'll just use a mouse for now, that's good enough. Now we can click OK. And there we go, we have our overlay set up and ready to be used. The next thing to do is go up into the settings again, go back to shortcuts, go back to add, back to find, and this time we need a key for our infographic. So I might use the key I. So I'll press the I key and then click OK. Now for our function, we need an overlay input one function. So to find the overlay functions, we can simply go to overlay. And here is our full list of overlay functions. And what we're looking for is overlay input one right here. This function toggles the overlay on and off for us. So every time we press it, it will turn on. And then the next time we press it, it will turn off. Now we need to select what input this overlay is going to display. So from here, we could use preview or any of the inputs, but what we want is our infographic. So I'll click that now. We can again decide if we want to assign this to the input number, but we don't. We want it to stay on our specific infographic. So I'll leave that unticked. We can choose to give it a title and description, but this time I'm not going to worry about it. The display is not relevant because we're using a keyboard once again. We can choose whether to make this a local shortcut, and we will because I don't need to use this shortcut in any of my other vMix presets. And then we can choose whether to put it in the web controller. And again, we won't worry about that. So I'll leave that on by default. I'll click OK. I'll click OK once more. And now let's try it out. We click on this I key. And there we go. We have our overlay appearing where we positioned it. And then if I press it again, it turns back off using the fade transition of half a second. Now, what you might have noticed is that the text in my overlay was a little bit small. Let me show you again. So what we really need is a way to make it bigger. So one way that we could do that is we could turn it off 
and then put it in the preview and then fade it across and fade it back. But that's, that's pretty hard work to be honest. And we actually have a better way of doing that in the interface. So the way that we can do that is if we have it on in our overlay, we can actually right click our input and that goes full screen and then right click it again to zoom it back down. But one step even better is we can make a shortcut to do that. So if we go back up to settings and then down to shortcuts once more, back to add. And this time, if we find perhaps the Z key because Z is for zoom, click OK. Now to our functions, and we could go down into our overlay functions again because it's an overlay function, or we could search for something like zoom and have a look through our hit list of zoom options. And here we can see overlay input one zoom. That's what we want. So here it says zooms picture in picture overlay to fill full screen and vice versa. In other words, it'll zoom up and zoom back just like I showed you before. Now, because this zooms an overlay, it's not even applied to a particular input. It's just zooming what's already there. So there's really not many things to set up for this particular shortcut. We can add a title if we want, but again, I'm not gonna worry about it. A description, I won't worry about that either. And we can choose whether to make this a local shortcut. Now, in this particular instance, it is fairly common that I use the Z key to zoom up my overlay input one. And so, I'm gonna leave this as a global shortcut this time rather than making it local. So I'll click OK again. And what you're gonna notice is that here we've got two bold shortcuts and we've got one non-bold. And that is to indicate whether it's a local or global shortcut. So the first two are local because they're bold and the last one is a global shortcut. I'll click OK again. And now we're ready to use this key. We can press the Z key and zoom right up. And then we can press it once more to zoom it back down. So let's quickly go over those three shortcuts that we've created. The first one was the H key to fade my camera into the program output. Secondly, we have the I key to put my overlay of my infographic on overlay one. And then finally, we can zoom up using the Z key so that you can read that overlay and then zoom back so that I can continue talking. There we go, we're all done. I hope that you found these things helpful and can use them to improve your live streams and make producing easier at the same time. If you have some favorite shortcuts, let people know in the comments. And if you have any questions about shortcuts or live streaming or vMix in general, you can head to our website at vmix.com and take a look at our help documentation, knowledge base articles and forums. You can also email us from there. Our team are very responsive and offer great support. So thanks for joining me on this episode of Know Your Shortcuts. I'll catch you on the next one.